Before we start, I want to tell you about another podcast you might like. It's called This Is Love. Stories about how to be alone, how to live forever, how to wait, how to worry, and yes, how to love. Now, the creators of the podcast Criminal, very popular podcast. I've gone on record saying Phoebe Judge is my favorite podcaster. They surprised everybody when they turned their attention to an investigation of a very different kind. It comes from the criminal people. You know, it's high quality. This is Love explores perseverance, obsession, and what happens when you risk betting it all. Season two is in full swing now. Find it at thisislovepodcast.com or subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Have diabetes or know someone who does? Check out One Drop, diabetes management for the 21st century. One Drop's glucose monitor is sleek and compact, and strips are delivered right to your door. Use the award-winning One Drop app to track your blood sugar, food, meds, and activity, plus get 24-7 access to your very own certified diabetes coach. Learn more at getonedrop.com and use code STORIES to save 20%. Hello to all my cat people. It's Beautiful Anonymous. One hour, one phone call, no names, no holds barred. I'd rather go one on one. I think it'll be more fun. And I'll get to know you, and you'll get to know me. Hello, everybody. It's Chris Gethard welcoming you to another episode of Beautiful Anonymous, a show I am very lucky to do. Thanks for supporting it. Thanks for supporting me as well. I tell you, I was plugging my book for a while on the show, and they told me the sales aren't great. They're not blowing people away, and that's okay. But they did tell me the audio book sound pretty well, and I assume that's the people who listen to this show. Thank you for that. Thanks for supporting me and everything. Oh, also, you know, last week's episode, we had the, uh, the girl who, whose house had recently burned down. First of all, beautiful anonymous the community. Her mom has been posting pictures of all those animals. So you're going to want to join. Check out that episode thread for those sweet animal pics. Thanks to everybody who contributed to that GoFundMe. It was heartwarming to see. I think the beautiful anonymous listeners kicked in a couple thousand bucks on that. And uh, it's very cool. Very cool. Don't forget, we have the beautiful anonymous follow-ups series. Beautiful follow-ups on Stitcher Premium. Last week, we followed up with the caller from Love is Everywhere. Um, one of the all-time classic calls, uh, raising a child with cancer, very, very sad, inspiring call. Follow-up is the same. We hear from uh, the same caller about how her and her family are doing. And again, I would say maybe an even more heartbreaking, yet somehow more inspiring call. And this Friday, we got a call, uh, follow-up with a caller from Married the Day We Met. Remember that one, the opera singer, who uh, fell into that really intense love story that went dark and uh, some bombshells in the follow-up to that one. Now, this week's call, I want to just right out of the gate say to everybody who comments about this one on the internet, remember, this is a human being here and let's not get too caught up in it because you will hear this one has some, a lot of drama and some mystery to it. It's an intriguing story. It's a very human story too. Remember the human side and enjoy this intriguing tale of of love and drugs and dealing with the future. Enjoy it, everybody. Thank you for calling Beautiful Anonymous. A beeping noise will indicate when you are on the show with the host. Hello? Hello? Hi. How's it going? What's up? Uh, How's it going? For me? It's good. I didn't sleep as much last night as I would have liked, but I had... A big old cup of tea this morning, trying to give myself a kick. So that's how nice. it's going. For yeah, me. I really like that you always answer honestly. It's cool. Thanks. Yeah, try to do my best. Try to do my best. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know. Just people make the worst comments, like "How are you doing?" and then they just immediately talk about something else, like they just do not care. And I don't know. Everybody's so so stuck in this, like, you have to be good kind of mindset. And it's just really cool to hear, I don't know, a real answer. Didn't sleep much having some tea. Do, cool. I, I do my best to try to set a tone at the top of these calls for simple honesty and truth. Yes. Telling. So, cool. how, so in the spirit of that, how are you doing? Oh, man, my life has been weird these past couple weeks for about a month 
two months. Uh, lately, my husband and I thought it would be cool to flip houses. We both work in the mortgage industry and saw people in the Midwest were making way more on their houses than they should. And when we first bought our house, we had a super low budget. So we bought a foreclosure and just paycheck by paycheck started doing some cool things to it and then ended up selling it for a huge profit. And uh, we were like, okay, well, let's move in with the parents until the next foreclosure comes along. And in the meantime of living in the parents' basement, I have found out that he's cheated on me. And so now the next step is weird. Oof. Yeah. T is not going to solve your problems. T did the trick for me this morning. Except, you know, honestly, God, a T works some, it's magic. Like hot tea, some Earl Grey, some chamomile. It just... Very soothing. I've been craving a lot of tea lately. Do you like so you like tea so over my coffee? Are, uh, I'm a coffee drinker too, oh, but I, coffee is good for making me aware that there's a world around me, and tea is good <laughs> for was helping me kind of relax. I don't know, realize that things even in uncomfortable. He's just very soothing. Good to know. Just so you know, your phone is a little staticky, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, okay. It could, I don't know. I Since moving, I think that my parents' house doesn't take my cell service as good as my old one did. If I have to drive to, uh, I don't know, a little farther away to get better reception, that's possible. I'm also outside because my husband's in the house. And uh, you guys I, just, are... I don't know. I didn't want to so, talk around him. Okay, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Because we're talking about tea, and obviously that's me easing into it. But so you're living. You're living. You're living in your your parents' basement or his parents' basement? My parents' basement, and he's here with me because uh, we've got a seven year old together, and breaking everything to him while they don't have a new house just seems too harsh so we're taking things one day at a time looking for a new house because my son expected that anyway and then when it's time to go to the new house uh i'd probably just hang back while they kind of settle in i don't know it's still all fresh enough where i don't know what i'm doing yeah i mean this is uh this is a grim situation you're you're facing. Yeah, but I'm really sorry. I'm also, uh, it's a, it's okay. I'm not the. I'm in a way better position than I could be. Um, so it's cool because we made a profit off the last house. I've got some money to start me out for the next one, so to see. So I'm not worried about anybody moving on financially. Okay, so that's nice mm-hmm. and. Um, I don't know. We'll still, we'll still both show up to parent teacher conferences and do all the right things for the kid. And so, I don't know. I know that people after separation, divorce and things like this, they always say that it's for the best and they always end up happier. So I know that things suck and they're going to be uncomfortable for a while, but I also always trust everybody else's advice. So I don't know. It's probably just, I'm sure it's all going to be okay. I'm sure. I'm sure in the long run that's true. And you said this is all within yeah. the past couple of weeks or month, you said? Yeah. Uh, it was, dude, it was weird because um, he works in this huge office. And so I don't know all his coworkers. And of course, it ended up being with a coworker. Um, the, the other woman's husband was sending me messages being like, hey, I think you should know your husband slept with my wife and I was like, no, not my husband. No way, no way, no way. Like, because he does, I don't know. He treats me nicely with the exception of this. Like he wakes me up with coffee in the mornings. He does the grocery shopping and the laundry and he makes me dinner and he always asks what I want to eat. And he's just really nice at taking care of me. And so 
I was, I was just completely in denial. It was like, I don't even know you. And then he's like, no, 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 no. Just ask your husband about this girl. I'm sure the truth will come out. And so I did. I was like, hey, I got these weird messages today from this guy. And he was like, what the heck? I've heard of him. He's crazy. And was just denying everything. And so um, it was weird because this guy was giving me a bunch of personal information about what the inside of my house looked like. And he was getting everything right. Um, And he knew, like, secrets about my marriage, like, weird little fights that my husband and I have had over the years. And I just, there's no way for a stranger to know this. And so it was all super uncomfortable. And I'm trying to mentally get over how in the world does this guy know this, but I want to trust my husband. I have no reason not to trust my husband. And so I'm, like, going to counseling and trying to work through things. And then we go on a little vacation to get away. And then we come back and then I get a picture of my husband and the other woman from the woman's husband. I don't know how he ended up with it, but he just, he had a lot of information and ended up being right in the end. And it was so weird to go through all that in the beginning and then get lied to about it by the person that I trusted most and then find out that it was all a lie. Yeah. When you say you got a picture of them together, it, it, it wasn't a picture of them being intimate, was it? Uh, no, thank, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I would have probably puked or something. I don't know. Uh, it was just them in my house on my couch together, hanging out. Um, but their arms were around each other. So, I mean, it was definitely like you couldn't, you couldn't hide that. And Your then especially house. just the fact that I had asked um, cause he had that day off work. And so I asked him when I called him, I, it sounded like maybe he was hanging out with a buddy and he was like, no, and sounded offended. And at the time I thought he was just, I don't know, crabby from me asking too many questions or something silly, but Damn. yeah, no. So it was pretty, I mean, with all the lying, it, it became pretty clear that this girl's husband was telling me the truth and mine was not. Now, when you say that it was a picture of them in your house, do you mean your parent, your parents' basement? Oh no, no, no! Your house, Our old you own. When we were getting ready to Got it. sell it, yeah. Got so. it. So there's two yeah. questions. Here's okay, okay. So this is a lot. I feel like I got. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, more so for you than me. I'm I'm just going to ask a bunch of questions. I, I want to be really sensitive, though, because it, it, to me, it's really clear. You're still processing this, and I'm sure there's still some elements of being shell-shocked. So I want to be really respectful Oh, of that. totally. So just let me know if and when you're oh, like— Oh, no, you will not cross any lines <laughs> with me, so— <laughs> Okay, here's my, here's my first two questions, then, that I bet a lot of people are thinking to themselves as they're out there listening. One— why didn't you kick him out? And two, you had mentioned that you're going to set him and your kid up to live together. Why? Why are you? Uh, why are you going to let him have have custody of the kid? Because it sounds like he's the okay. one who pulled all the bullshit, and then also, yeah, established that there was a lot of of lying around. So, so why are those two situations? Well, part of why my husband and I worked out well getting to know each other in the beginning related so well was over having issues with the way we were raised, thinking that our parents weren't really paying attention to how it was affecting us psychologically while getting older. He came from um, a background where his parents were pretty absent and mine were very much there, but with a lot of religion involved. And so it, we just both felt like our parents weren't really um, putting us first as their children in a lot of situations. And so we've always made a huge point to put our son first. That being said, we started dating when my son was like mm, six months old. So it's actually his son, but there has never been any sort of custody agreement with the other mom. We've always had him half and half the time. Everything's been very amicable and everything has always been, is this in our son's best interest? So moving forward, um, I didn't kick them out because I, I want to make sure that my son is good 
to go. So we're sort of in the process. I'm just going to do it gently. Um, I've never been able, I've just never had it in me to be such an asshole and be like, okay, well, you're on your own. I also know that going forward, we'll probably keep a bunch of our same routine. I'll probably pick my son up from school and drop him off with his dad when it's time for them to have dinner and go to bed. And it will probably work out some sort of schedule like that. So um, it's not that he just gets our son, but also he's kind of entitled. Right. So he, he's not your biological son, technically. You've just been there no, from the no, start. No, no. He's my stepson. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So I would imagine then, yeah, I, I, I can see that's a really tangled up situation. And yeah, that also yeah. means that. And you, it's been pretty easy to work around in the past, but I guess it does have some some issues now. But right. honest, ugh, my my husband is actively trying to apologize and save our relationship, which um that's that's too much for me to deal with but um i'm i know that as much as i want to be able to see my son and if i want him to spend some of the week with me and sleep at my future house then he will be extremely okay with that and very respectful so right right that, I, that's a rock and a hard place sure right of, i would imagine legally a court system is going to go well it this is his biological son, so he's gonna he's oh, gonna be totally. based with him. And then if you kick your husband out, this poor kid who had nothing to do with this gets put out on his ass too. Yes. Yep. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh. And is your is I your, know is, is your husband uh, when you say he's like trying to apologize and rebuild things? Is this impeding his urgency as far as finding a new place? You know um, what I mean? No, no, I don't think so. That's good. That's good. We're we're all just kind of taking things day by day. I think that he's really, it's it's so hard to tell because I want to say, I think he's really genuine and being sorry and that he didn't know what a mistake he was making until it was made. But again, I don't know. Well, I, the thing that's hard to buy about that is it came down to, hey, I have a photograph of you and this woman in our house. Right. So. Yeah. That's a good, I think that's oh, a question. Chris, I mean, I have thought about this before where yeah. it was like, if someone, um, okay, I went to a show with one of my buddies and um, ended up drinking too much and he tried to kiss me and I was like, if I tell my husband, is he going to think that I brought this on? Is this going to cause relationship problems? Should I just, you know, say, should should I just hide all this information so that there are no issues because it's not worth it in the end because I know that I didn't kiss him and that nothing happened. And so I've tried to put myself in his shoes where I'm like, if I know that a mistake happened that is not going to affect the relationship to avoid hurting other people, would I lie about it? Probably. So there's a chance he was trying. Oh, God. But also at the same time, it sounds so fucked up that I think that I'm just also trying to make excuses and trying to, I don't know, put myself in a position where I I don't want him to completely disregard, I don't know, my humanity. Just so yeah. I keep trying to make up a situation where... I don't know. I don't know how much you're in denial. I also don't know you. I don't know him. But just hearing the basic facts of it, I'll say you're giving him a lot of credit. You're giving him a lot of credit because yeah. you're right, obviously. There are situations where uh, maybe, uh, you know, obviously, obviously there's it's going to be situations where uh, – where, you, where people flirt or where someone doesn't realize you're married and comes on strong or someone has too many drinks. And those are a lot different than than, than what was clearly a situation. That's true. Where, a lot of things had to happen for another woman to end up at my house. That yeah, day. and yeah. If, her, if it gets to the point where her husband knows about specific fights you guys have had, this is far beyond, hey. That's true. Things went a little far. This is to the point where someone else's husband was able to glean so much of what was happening that they were able to reference secret shit from your life. That's not a, I got too drunk at a bar 
or that's true. It's, we've been married a while, and it felt nice to be I'm flirted glad you bring with. Bring that up. Yeah, I, I gotta say, <laughs> I'm not trying to cause more trouble. I'm not trying to make it harder. I gotta say. Oh no. I also hope you're standing it's up just, for yourself. I hope this guy's not living in your parents' fucking basement because of your goodwill towards this kid and taking advantage of it because he's taking advantage of enough stuff. If I may be so bold. Sure. No, I think you're right. I think that that puts a good perspective on things because, yeah, I I just, it's still so hard to wrap my head around and there's a lot for me to process that I definitely lose little bits and pieces along the way because the other guy who was giving me all that support was, I don't know, I thought he was harassing me for a long time. So I was blocking Facebook accounts, I was blocking phone numbers he was texting me from and just. I don't know. He was really persistent. And I mean, he was probably losing so, his mind, right? He probably was put in a similar situation of shock and, and hurt and fear. And he's probably coming on strong and acting like an internet lunatic or text message lunatic, like a stalker. But, but he's probably yeah, losing but he it. Also was, I looked him up on the local, um, like court case website yeah. that will show everybody's ongoing history and he had so many open cases about oh, him and stalking and things oh. like that who was pretty oh god yeah i don't know if i've ever heard of anyone who wound so. up in a more head spinning version of this I know. Than you, <laughs> living in your parents oh, basement you want me to drop another bomb always <laughs> i know what my uh, job is so i t- you have no reason to be talking to this girl at work anymore because he would make casual conversation. Oh, the day that I broke it to him when I had the picture and he didn't know I had the picture. I called him and said, you need to leave work now and come home and talk to me about something. And he goes, oh, it's because her husband saw us talking on her break outside, isn't it? And I was like, oh, I didn't know about that, but I've got something else to talk to you about. So he... um he comes home, we talk about it, and I was like, okay, well, if you, I mean, during your relationship, if you want to say, I don't think that you have any reason to oh, wait, talk Wait, can you say that again? Outside. You shouldn't can, talk to Can her. you say that again? You got staticky, so you said, oh, yeah. I was just telling him he had no reason to talk to this girl at work. He's kind of in a managerial position, so whether she needed help with anything, he's like, okay, if she comes over to my desk again, I'll just glare at her until she walks away. You're right. There's no reason to talk to her. So a couple days ago, he came home and said, I need to tell you that I had to talk to her today. But she told me that her husband OD'd on heroin and died this morning. So also, my source of information is dead because he overdosed because they're both heroin addicts. And so now she's messaging me, telling me about her relationship with my husband but I know she's throwing in some lies and I'm dealing with liars and I don't know. And people who, I don't know, my source is gone, but I guess it probably shouldn't matter. Um, I'm a little relieved because I was feeling stalked. I had called the local county courthouse and they said that they wanted me to file an order of protection so he couldn't message me anymore. And I guess that's not a thing now, but that's just something else I'm still processing. I have, ah. I have to ask, I, I have to ask, and I hate to ask this question. I never ask this question, but just because it's people listening are going to wonder. I just haven't, this, this is yeah. all, this is all true. This is all true. Let's pause there. I had to ask, right? Cause this one's building in a crazy way. I had to ask. We got ads guys. Let's go ahead and check those out. We'll be right back with more phone calls. Sometimes the smallest changes can have the biggest benefits. An easy change that your body will thank you for? Switching to aluminum-free coconut deodorant from Kopari. Kopari's coconut deodorant. It's aluminum-free. It's vegan. It's also free of silicones, sulfates, parabens, GMOs, and baking soda, all that stuff. So it's great for sensitive skin. Kopari's deodorant fights odor with plant-based actives such as sage oil and coconut oil. It doesn't leave behind a sticky white residue. Just the sweet, subtle scent 
of fresh coconut milk, and it outlasts your longest days. This is Kopari's number one selling product. You can barely keep it in stock. They also offer a deodorant subscription. It's one of the smartest things I've ever heard of. You choose how often you want to receive it, they ship it to you automatically for free, and you never run out of deodorant again. Is there a worse feeling than realizing you're about to leave the house? You forgot to replace your deodorant. Eliminate that with this smart service from Kopari. And Kopari offers a money-back guarantee, so there's no reason not to try it today. I tell you, I got one of these Kopari coconut deodorants right in my medicine cabinet. I use it. It is great quality product. Not much more you can say to that. It's a good thing. I use it. I don't know what else to tell you here. Go to koparibeauty.com slash beautiful to make the safe switch today and save $5 off your first order when you subscribe. It's Kopari, K-O-P-A-R-I, beauty.com slash beautiful, koparibeauty.com slash beautiful. Ulta Beauty believes that beauty is limitless. Ulta Beauty celebrates the possibilities in each person and the notion that everyone has the potential to be whatever and whoever they want to be. That's why Ulta Beauty offers every guest the total beauty experience. I have used Ulta Beauty. I, my wife and I both, we went to their site. Now, she and I were looking for different things, right? We were, uh, there's different needs in, in our lives. We're different people. And we went to that site. We both were able to find things instantly that we wanted to order that really helped us, things that were no-brainers, where it was like, oh, this is the type of thing I look for. Sometimes can't find it on the shelves, and it's sitting right here. Go ahead, you discover a world of beautiful possibilities with over 20,000 of the best products across makeup, fragrance, hair care, skin care. Choose from over 500 of your favorite brands like Tarte, Morph, Living Proof, and so much more. From everyday favorites to the brands you love to splurge on, you can find it all. And explore even more possibilities with hair, skin, and brow services to meet your needs and lifestyle. Whether you're ready to run the town, rock your look, or tell your story, Ulta Beauty's here to help. They're here to help you show it to the world, okay? Because Ulta Beauty knows you're not here to get beautiful. You're here because you already are. Visit Ulta.com, that's U-L-T-A dot com, to learn more, to find a store near you. Ulta Beauty, the possibilities are beautiful. Thanks again to all of our advertisers. Now let's get back to the phone call. I, I have to ask, and I hate to ask this question. I never ask this question, but just because it's people listening are going to wonder. I just haven't, this, this, is, yeah. all, this is all true. This is all true. Oh God! Does it not sound true? It sounds so it's true, and that's true. It sounds so true, and that's so fucked up. That's why I gotta ask. It's so true and so fucked up that I mean, I know huh, I got my sisters listening to Beautiful Anonymous, uh -huh. and so they're gonna be like, "Oh, that's my sister" when they hear this. So yeah, this like, is not a story yeah, that you can mistake. This is not one where you're like, "That no. might be my sister." <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No. Okay, so another question. Just be, and again, first of all, I'm going to say this just in all reality. I don't know what your relationship with your parents is like now. You said when you were a kid, you weren't so close. You're living with them. You have sisters. I don't know if they're your support network. I don't know if you're seeing um, somebody who can, you know, some sort of therapist who can help keep you afloat. But I, I, I do. I will just say, as a compassionate human being, this is a situation where you're in over your head. And it sounds like you're handling it remarkably well, but there's also shock involved and pain involved. And yeah. are you, do you have that safety net? Because if not, you got to start building one. I think I do. Um, yeah, I do. I still have been seeing my therapist regularly. Um, it's uncomfortable because she started as my therapist. And then my husband started joining me because it was, I don't know, it was making our relationship better. It was cool. And it was just nice at home. So he started coming with me. So he's still been going to those. And I think that she's really hoping things are going to work out. But I also just need to see someone on my own again. So I probably yeah. need to just find someone else. Um, but other than that, my family at home, yeah, the, they're they're making sure that I'm not spending too much time alone. And good, good. Yeah, I think and you can vent and you can air it all out honestly. I need them. Yeah. Okay, another painful question that I feel a responsibility to ask. So these people were drug addicts, and you've seen this in court documents. This is a verifiable true thing. 
Do you know, yeah. do you know if your husband was tangled up in that at all? I don't think he would be, no. I think I would be able to recognize those signs better. Um, I've had people that I've had to cut out of my life for that reason. Um, Cause I'm, no, here's, I don't here's the so. reason I bring it up. Here's the reason I bring it up is that, uh, and this is pain. I'm going to say something painful and it might be something that you've talked about with people or thought about yourself. It might not be, but I will say that, and I, I, I'm, I have compassion. I have compassion for people who use drugs. I've lost one of my best friends of all time to heroin. I've talked about it on the show before. That being said, even hearing that your husband was was sleeping with someone who's caught up in the throes of addiction raises some real concern that he's tangled up in some stuff that you don't want a seven-year-old kid involved in. And I know that that's a whole mess. Right. But totally. I, I, no, that is something where if my son was somehow and like affected by that, I would have no problem turning this into a big, nasty legal court case. Yeah. Um, because, you, like I said, we've always, always made sure to put my son first. And I guess I should add, my husband denies that they ever slept together, but it's just so hard to believe. Um, oh, wow, he's still with, denying I mean, it. Yeah, he says that she came over to hang out and that that's it. But I just, oh, I just don't know. It's just, it seems so crazy. Was this, hang, else was this hanging I out think, after you had already expressed misgivings about this relationship or, or this chaos had started to happen? Um, the, okay. Lynn told me that my husband and his wife went on multiple dates and again that could all be made up i don't know um i only have evidence from this one time this one day that he was off work when she came over to the house and he says that nothing happened they were just hanging out but then there's a picture of him with his arm around her so who took the picture this is perplexed the more i hear about this the more i have to say i can feel what you're feeling because this is perplexing lie about it. He shouldn't have lied about it. So no, he's lying about something. Who took the picture right. of in your house? He, he did. I can tell it's his arm in the selfie position. So I don't remember what I was going to say about that. Oh, no. Okay. So if she did just come over, there's a really good chance he didn't know that she was crazy until after the fact because they were just work buddies prior and then he found out through me being like, this guy's been messaging me and it's making me so uncomfortable. And now that more of the truth has come out, I guess he went back to her and he was like, why does your husband know all this stuff? And she was like, well, he's beating me to get all the information. And he was telling me that the girl was showing up to work with bruises and Again, I've I have not been to his workplace. I've never met this woman. I don't know what's true and what's false about that stuff. But I I don't think that he would be caught up in the drugs because I don't think he would have picked her specifically if he had known about the drugs. It just doesn't seem like him. I think he he's smarter than that. Yeah. This is, I can't imagine, I mean, this is head spinning for me the more I hear about it. Yeah, and I feel like, I I really hope I'm not jumping around or leaving out weird no. pieces of, I don't know. I mean, it sounds... And honestly, I didn't think that I was going to talk to you about this the whole time. Of course you, what, I How mean... How far into if, the call are we? <laughs> hey, we're, we got 33 minutes left. If you got other stuff that you think supersedes this mystery... By all means, it's your call. Uh, Bring no, it I up. I feel like this has been my whole life lately. And of course so it has. At first, I was like, it'd be cool to talk to a third party to get some outside perspective, sure. But then, uh, I don't know. Here's the outside Ugh. perspective. Here's the outside perspective. Speaking only for myself, I imagine maybe echoing some thoughts of anybody who might be listening in the future. This is a terrifically complex and confusing situation. Whatever's going on, my guess is that part of why you're 
so c- clearly still processing it is because it seems like there's clearly pieces of this puzzle you don't have. And it sounds confusing. I mean, this guy who really stalked you, who you have been able to verify was a very troubled human being who's now dead, was giving you all this information. And you know, at the very least, your husband's lying about something. It's weird because he's still insisting they didn't sleep together, which at this point, it's it's wrecked his life to a degree that it's like, well, why would he still lie about it? I... I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and, and be a Monday morning quarterback or have any opinion into something that's very real in your life. But I, uh, if he wasn't sleeping with her, then it was drugs or something, right? Yeah. He's lying about something. Because what? Because that's yeah, the thing. It is. If, if there's still something missing, but the most important thing, because we're just wondering where to go from here. Like the therapist is wondering if she can save our relationship but if i can't trust that even when i press an issue that the truth is going to come out yeah, then yeah uh i can't i can't do that for the rest of my life i'm 27 yeah because i mean it sounds like it sounds like uh it sounds like you're it's legitimate to say that i mean you said he was cheating and there's some elements to which that is true but it's not I don't want to put words in your mouth. It sounds like even you're still not 100% certain what's true and what's not. Oh, totally. Yeah. Damn, that's messed up. That's messed yeah. up. I'm so sorry. It's like a soap oh, opera. Oh, it's okay. It's like half soap opera, half Breaking Bad. Where you're like, what is <laughs> I've never seen Breaking Bad. Don't watch it. Part. I can totally get it. Don't watch it anytime soon. It's about people who live uh, layers upon layers of secret lives, and whereas on the surface they have a oh, happy, no, that would fuck me up. <laughs> happy, happy suburban life <laughs> I and can't. hiding all sorts of layers of things. Yeah, maybe not right now. Maybe right yeah. now you need to stick to like the Great British Bake Off. I've heard it's good though. What, Breaking Bad or British Bake Off? The answer is that both Actually, are awesome. Both. Yeah, both are amazing. <laughs> but I tell you, I've been having some stressful times lately in my own life. I won't make it about me, but I will tell you, and nothing like what you're dealing with. Uh, I will say, even having this, man, the great British Bake Off, there is not a better show if you just need to really? kick back and decompress. It's pleasant English people baking pies. And then it's a reality show where they get eliminated, but when they do, they're so gracious and nice about it. And very often someone will get kicked off and their exit interview will be them going, you know what? It was the right call. I'm in over my head. All these other bakers are a little more talented and I'm just so excited to see what they can accomplish moving forward. And they say them with like, you know, like Manchester, like Mancunian accents. And you're like, if this was an American reality show, they'd be throwing cupcakes across the room and screaming and yelling and accusing each other of wrongdoing. And holy shit, is this just the most pleasant, relaxing show. And if there's yes. one thing I can recommend to you right now, it's go get lost in the Great British Bake Off because it's a pleasant <laughs> diversion from real life. That's not going to solve any of your problems, I'm sorry to say. No, I got the day off. I got some time for some British baking. Damn, man. I'm really tough. I'm really... uh Sorry, you're mixed up with this. And I, again, me too, but I'll get through it. I gotta ask another tough Everybody question. Everybody does. Another tough question. Sure. Another tough question, just about your son. And I, I, I'll say this too. That's it's it's so fucking noble and awesome that you keep saying my son, because I would imagine in a lot of cases Aww. when it's not your biological son that when things get fractured like this, the language starts shifting to his son. But the I think it speaks to the fact that you're still very protective of this child and connected to this child. And, and that's such a huge breath of relief. Now, another uncomfortable question. Being that there have been some elements of drug users, of people who are on record in the courts, have you thought, have you thought about asking any sort of authority to at least look into this situation? I know where I grew up in New Jersey was the Division of Youth and Family Services. Some places it's Child Protective Service. Have you thought about making a call or do you feel like that would be more disruptive for the kid? I feel like that would be more disruptive. And I honestly, I have known enough drug users and my husband and I spend enough time together and share enough. I I would know 
if something like that was going on. Yeah. I'm sorry to keep harping on it. 100% no. I'm sorry to keep harping on it, but when you tell me that one of the four central players in this story died of an OD and that one of the other two is apparently also addicted, it's just hard to not immediately think of. Because... Yeah. They're, they're, no, I think that that, that part just uh, was completely accidental for getting mixed up in this. Yeah, um, and probably a big contributor as to why it's so funny. My is very smart and very uh, charismatic and attractive, and he, uh, uh, probably a little arrogant, he, he was like, I was just wanting some attention. I, I guess things in our relationship were rocky, and I didn't know it. And so he said that he was wanting some attention, so he invited one of 15 different options that he could have had. Um, he doesn't say he, like, it's not, um, he had people exploiting in his phone, but like he could have like, something in the net. Oh, wait. Like, Does anybody want to hang out? Repeat that again. So he was saying he had 15 different options? You, well, you're... he was making it sound like he could have asked any of the women in his office, and they all probably would have come over to hang out. He just, he makes it sound like, uh, and I've seen, I've seen the way that they comment on his Facebook post, because you're Facebook friends with people in your office, and um uh, yeah, I could totally see that if he was like, hey, do you want to come over and hang out? there are a couple of different people who would gladly say yes. And so I think that he just accidentally picked one who was a user. And but so didn't fucking know what? That guy, I'm going to go ahead and get mad right now. And it sounds like you're someone okay. who doesn't want to get mad. Oh, that's your, that's your response? I could have picked any of these 15 people to give me this attention. Oh, and I happened to pick the craziest one. First of all, what a fucking surprise that you're someone who entertains thoughts like that and you happen to pick the crazy one. Oh, yeah, it's real shocking. Second of all, what are these Facebook comments? And why is he not shutting them down? What, what is that about? What is oh, that about? I don't like that. I don't that, like that. On behalf of you, I don't I, like that. Okay, so I guess... He should I be stepping in and saying that's not appropriate. Like, oh, God. I don't like that. Sorry. No... No, it's just, it's too innocent where you can't shut that stuff down. But from a female perspective, you know. You can smell a rat. There's a big garbage truck rolling by. Hold on. Yeah, the big can garbage truck is named your husband. That's the big garbage <laughs> truck that's rolling by. The big garbage truck oh, is sitting in your parents' so basement right now. He's still, he, he's still so nice and uh, still taking is. such, it's like... It's the most unfortunate situation because he seems, because how shitty of me would it be if I had cheated on my husband, realized I had done the most fucked up thing and was going to turn around and never do that again. And I am trying so hard and everybody hears the story is like, oh yeah, what a fucking asshole. And I'm trying so hard to make things right. It's, I always try to, I just, oh. I don't want to be the asshole who's like, yeah, fuck you over and over and over again. And if, if he is trying to fix things. And again, the most important part is if I can't completely trust him, obviously yeah. this is not going to work out and I'm heavily leaning that way. But I also have just a really hard time because this was so shocking and my husband was so sweet and so perfect to me. And, that I'm, not, and I'm not trying to, I fit. can't, I can't just, Walk away, of course. And I'm not trying to say, no, walk away. That would be, I've known you, I've, been, I've talked to you anonymously for 36 minutes. I'm just worried minutes. about giving off all this shitty information and then he listens to beautiful anonymous. He listens? Like, he listens uh, to the show? Oh, no, I don't think so. But um, oh. we're both off together today and he was starting to make me breakfast when I got through. And I was just like, holy shit. Just so you know, uh, I called Beautiful Anonymous. I'm probably going to be gone for like an hour. So oh, he must uh, his eyes his got pants. really big and he's like, go, go, go. Like, he, yeah. I don't know. He was excited and supportive. Yeah, was so he? Yeah, he's going to be now real excited when he Now that I've been gone for this. so long, he's going to know that I got through. And then when he finds out that this is what I talked about, he's going to, I don't know. I mean, like, he's, he's a real person. He's a real human. He's going to be course. ashamed and he's going to be uncomfortable. And well, it's just, and it's, I get it that too. Because he has been so chilled but I also want to be so angry, but also what if, what if, and I'm, I am not making this an excuse to 
try to forget or ignore everything. Yeah. That is not what I'm doing. But still, what if he is a real human who realized he fucked up and he's not? I don't know. Yeah. When he realized he was an alcoholic, he cold turkey alcohol, and it. He's been two years sober now, and he's just. When he found out that he was going to have a son, he quit smoking and he cold turkey that and just he learned lessons a hard way. And through yeah. a bunch of therapy, we have found out that that is from his upbringing and that stuff that happens to you when you were a kid legitimately affects you when you're an adult. And it's just, I don't know, brains are weird and the way that they sculpt you as a human is just weird. But um I don't like there's a chance he realized I fucked up and he will never think about that ever again. So it's also hard for me to just be like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck of you. Course. Oh, beautiful anonymous. And then he <laughs> listens and I just, I don't know. No, his, I'm, his heart's going to be touched hearing you be so fair and gracious and honest about it. And, and I have to say too, you're making me feel, you're making me realize what a, basic uh dumbass I'm being because what a beautiful thing you just said about humanity and and the complexity of the human brain and I'm getting mad on your behalf for the simple things on this one but you are <laughs> but it's also in really the middle easy of I mean you heard this of information course. of course and, I got yeah. he hearing so that, different parts to hearing it. that any part of his of his uh breakdown of this was hey I could have had any woman I wanted and I picked the crazy one that that oh, it, that know. set me off I'm sorry but that set me off you know understandably off. Understandably. But also have you ever thing. said something where you're like oh my god why did that just come out of my uh, mouth every day of my life <laughs> every day of my and I'm not perfect <laughs> I'm not perfect I'm not perfect being married is hard work and everybody messes up and of course, of course. Oh, God. We had RSVP'd to this wedding that we had for some mutual friends this past weekend. And hearing them talk about how you're going to go through all these hard times and you need to stick next to each other and work through <laughs> the hard times. Like, it was the sweetest thing and also made me so angry at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it is work. Yeah. It is work and it is hard. And I'm glad I'm glad you broke down that about his past uh, addictions and how he's broken them and how he's learned. And uh, it is a good reminder that life is not simple. It's not simple. Right. And I'm given the simple reactions and I got to challenge myself to be better than that but on your behalf. That's it's expected and appropriate to have the simple reaction. But I also it's not ha your job. Have you, have, have you given yourself time to get pissed have you given yourself time to think because you're thinking very nobly about the kid and even him to some degree and protective of him which i understand he's been your husband for years that oh. say, are you giving yourself no, time I've to been. just unleash i hope the answer is yeah i get pissed because i'm getting pissed on her behalf that a lot of us are I bet a lot of us are also thinking, man, you know what? My life's pretty good, but I wish there were just certain products or services available in my life that could make it that much better. Luckily for you, we got advertisers that offer such things. Check them out. Use the promo codes. Helps the show when you do. We'll be right back after this with more phone call. Thanks to two years of research and development and multiple improvements in design, performance, and comfort, Bombas are the most comfortable socks in the history of feet with an arch support system that provides extra support where you need it, and a cushioned footbed that's reinforced for comfort without added bulkiness, Bombas feel like a hug around your foot. Not to mention, Bombas' stay-up technology ensures your socks stay in place without leaving a mark. And the super soft cotton material makes you never want to take it off. So whether you're a runner, power walker, or power lounger, there's a pair of Bombas that'll add comfort to your life. Now, I tell you, I'm calling in someone who loves Bombas more than any human being I know. I am talking about the love of my life, my beautiful wife, my closest friend and confidant, someone whose opinion you can trust. Hallie, my wife, how are you? I'm good. Now, I do really love Bombas. <laughs> you do really love Bombas. I legitimately love them. You said last night when I asked you if you would do this, you said, I don't know if I can succinctly sum up all the reasons I love Bombas. Yeah, I'm wearing Bombas right now. 
because you know I didn't sleep well last night, which you know because when I don't sleep well, you don't sleep well. <laughs> yes, very true. <laughs> very true. You are. And then I, I woke up this morning. I was so tired, and I was like, I'm wearing bombas. I was like, I'm not facing this day with like less than four hours sleep and a crummy regular pair of socks. Like I need Bombas today. And would you say putting on the Bombas genuinely improves your mood and your day and your energy level? Oh, it just, it is a little hug. It's a little extra support, you know, just like telling you, you can do it. You got this. Is there any final personal appeal you'd like to put out there for our listeners to let them know your genuine love of this miraculous sock? Like if I could, if I had enough Bombas, I would throw out every other pair of socks that I have. <laughs> Legitimately. Seems like I know a thing I should be getting you for Christmas. <laughs> Maybe some more Bombas. <laughs> if you're out there listening, I want you to go to B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash stories. Use the code stories. You get 20% off your first order. That's Bombas dot com slash stories. Stories. You're going to get 20% off your first order. Thanks again to everybody who sponsors Beautiful and Honest. Now let's finish off the phone call. Have you given yourself time to think? Because you're thinking very nobly about the kid and even him to some degree and protective of him, which I understand. He's been your husband for years. That oh. means that, are you giving yourself no, time I've to been... just unleash? Yes. Good. Yes. Good. And my problem in the beginning was unleashing everything onto my husband. And then when my therapist heard that, she's like, oh, he's, he's a person. You cannot do that to him. <laughs> and so instead, she gave me a notebook. So she gave you a notebook. That's good. I've been doing a lot of writing, but yeah, sounds seems, like that seems to be pretty, pretty helpful. Happy to hear your therapist is helping you uh, stay firm, but direct it. Yeah, totally. She's, Expensive, but worth it. <laughs> I, I wish would, everybody could. <laughs> I think that's the tagline for my therapist, too. Expensive, <laughs> but worth it. <laughs> Therapy. Yeah. 2018. I just, <laughs> I, man, you. God, were, I just, I don't know where I would be without her. She is, I, I went through like five therapists until I found this one, and she happens to be the most expensive, but also the most real and. I don't know. It was important to find someone who was a good match for me. And I mean, sounds like, you, was, I mean, you just boiled down my whole HBO special to about 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> She's expensive, yeah, but a really good match. Your, real and yeah. Beautiful. I pre-ordered your Lose Well book. Oh, thank you so and much. And from all of the, yeah, you're welcome. I'm pretty excited to read it. From all of your promo, I keep, it's really easy to just want to take any situation I hear of and try to make it relatable. I keep hoping that it's going to make this shitty situation more acceptable. Can you, I don't know, can you tell me a little bit about your book and just <laughs> what, what you really mean by lose well without telling me? <laughs> I'm going to tell know, you right now. You don't have to. There will instantly in our Facebook group be conspiracy theorists who assume that this was all, that you are some improv actor from New York that I put up to making up the most fantastic oh, story no. we've heard in a while just to get, I will say this. What? I don't want to tie don't in. Don't say anything and drive them all nuts. <laughs> it's all true. It's all shadow. I'll read it. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, this is all subterfuge. The garbage truck coming. Like, yeah, the garbage truck sure is. He's cooking you breakfast oh. right now. Um, here's the thing about the book and we can't even hear the garbage truck. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about that. Uh, oh, cool. I'll say this. I'll say this. I'm not looking to tie your story into a plug for my book, but since you asked, I will say this. A lot of what I believe in my heart that shows up in the book is that when you face failure in life and when you kind of get knocked down hard in life, that it's, uh, it's, brutal and confusing and overwhelming, but also very often represents opportunity if you can see it. Now, I speak a lot of that from the perspective of a creative person who faces rejection a lot or who faces public scrutiny a lot when your work doesn't go in the direction you want. You know, like even coming off of a TV show where it's slowly dying week by week as the numbers drop and everybody gets to watch that publicly yeah. and they're tweeting about it. That is not 
nearly as difficult as what you're you're dealing with. What you're dealing with is a far more real world situation. Whereas my life, I'm lucky to be in an industry where through resilience I've survived in it, but it is ultimately an exciting game. I know that. That being said, it's almost like the Warren Buffett thing. When the economy tanked in 2008, Warren Buffett said, this is actually the investing opportunity of a lifetime. You can get in while things are a disaster. So if you can weather the storm of the worst situations, those are very often the ones where you learn the most about who you really are. And that's something that's at the core of the book that I really believe and that I uh, think that in the midst of all of this dark shit you're dealing with, one thing that I can just say from talking to you is even your ability to communicate it this clearly and this fairly um, towards all parties involved while dealing with a lot of pain and confusion shows me that you're a strong person. You're always going to be learning a lot. It seems like you always have the right priorities about trying to uh, build a good life for yourself and your son and the people you love. And I do sincerely hope that when these clouds pass and as you learn more and more about the truth of this and that this very fucked up thing becomes a little more distant from your life, that as you move forward, you are stronger and smarter for it and that you manage to kind of coexist with the pain in a way where you still also manage to build something even better out of whatever's being burned down right now. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Thanks. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares about my opinions? <laughs> yeah. You got a lot going on. I, I We have about 14 minutes left. Just really. Oh, my God. That feels so crazy. Everybody always says it flies, but it really does. Yeah. It's funny. Ever since you kind of went to bat and defended your husband when I was starting to get worked up, it is there is something fair to be said that this guy did some dirty shit. This guy did you dirty. He lied about it. Oh, yes. It does sound like he got caught up with some real fucking wackadoo shit on his own, though, too. Huh? And like they, It's so funny to hear that these people who, this guy who outed him to you was so fucking bonkers that even with you being pissed at him, you can still go, I sympathize that you're caught up with some real lunatic shit right now. I'm so... Yeah. I'm so tempted to say put him on the phone, but that's a real exploitative and bad idea. Ooh. That kind of sounds... I don't know. Would that be juicy for you? Actually, no. That'd probably be rude. Because, again, he's a human. And he's a human I, being. Okay. I still... <laughs> I, I do... I've got these back and forth little mental battles where sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel like shouting at a person right now and then yeah. i'm like no that's not no i mean in 10 seconds where's that gonna get me so there's been a lot of people listening who are probably like, get them on the phone get there and there's a part of me that wants to <laughs> but at the end of the day i mean at the end of the day i think i'd be very kind and fair to him as well because this is what i try to be as a host in general but that would be exploiting your story and, and putting him on the on the spot for potential shaming which it sounds like you're not very interested yeah. in, in that I would ultimately feel no. was a clickbait thing to do. And we try to be better than that here. Who wants the clickbait? But if he wanted to talk, I think I'd say to him, the simple thing I'd ask, here's the two things I'd ask in case it, in case it helps you in any way. Here, if I was going to talk to your husband, theoretically, which is probably a bad idea. Sure. Here's the things I would ask. One, when are you going to give this nice lady the whole truth? Whatever you got caught up in, dude, you got in over your head. You also lied. She doesn't have the whole story. Even if you think you've given it to her, she doesn't feel secure in that. So when are you going to sit down, drop the arrogance, drop the charm, just let your guard down, say, I was a piece of shit and here's how. Two, this lady loves this kid. And I know biologically it's your kid, but if, if you're in a situation where you're still caught up in any shit, this lady would take care of that kid while you go sort it out. And have you thought about that? Because if that kid's in trouble, he's got somebody in his life right now who's going to keep him out of trouble. And if you can't tell the truth about whatever is going on, that means you're still caught up in it on some level. And, and this kid deserves to be spared from that. If, you're, if everything was driven by your bad childhood, 
are you making are you taking every step you can take to make sure that this little seven year old boy doesn't suffer from that as well because it's fucked up. Those are the two questions I would ask. Is she ever going to get the full truth? Because if not, stop trying to get away with it. You know, not eighty five percent of the story, not ninety percent of the story, one hundred percent of the story. That's the terms and conditions to even entertain that this relationship might survive. You don't feel like you got in that. Also, let's think about this kid first. Should he be hanging out with you right now, dude? Those are the two big questions I would ask. I guess we'll never know. Wow. I'm not going to go in there and hunt him down. My parents have a pretty big house, actually. There's a chance that I would spend the time just looking for him. <laughs> no, I don't want you to go wander. I mean, if he... if he uh... <laughs> Also, that's part of why I'm outside. I would completely lose self-service and we would just be gone. Look, I mean, if he wants to call us back and say, let's do a companion episode where I'll do some soul bearing with you together, the voicemail number is 802-392-3288. He's welcome to leave a voicemail okay. and we'll, uh, <laughs> I'll give him an hour to air out yeah. his side of it as no, well. I will. Whatever, whatever works. I'll offer that to him yeah. and he might take you up on it. He really Who might. Who knows? I mean, I don't, I also don't want you to turn your pain into entertainment of others. I don't want No, that. I mean, this is, this is fine with me. You're tough. You're, t- you're a strong person. I think I'm losing. I'm gonna walk around a little bit. Do your uh, Do your parents know about everything that's happened in the basement? Uh, not everything, everything, but enough of the details. My parents. I've always tried to be careful with them. My mom is extremely religious, and I feel like. Uh, like, whatever I tell her, she's just going to feel this need to pray forever. And I, I feel like it would cause mental exhaustion for her. And I just, yeah. there's no need for that. So I tell her enough so that she can be that support for me, but not too much to where, I don't know. Hold on, I have to She's just this. praying all day. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was a for real. Sense. I don't say bless you. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'm an atheist now, and I feel like saying bless you is weird and very forceful. My, wa- so, my wife says salud. Uh, good health is the. What does she say? Salud. I think that's what they what say. What does that mean? In Italy, salute. I think S A L U D. Is that Italian? Is that the Italian response to a no? Sneeze? Isn't that just how you say hello? I don't know. Isn't hello bon- buongiorno? Now we're talking. Okay, now, now you. Now we're trying to suss out basic Italian. That's what this is. <laughs> After the most fascinating call we've had in one of the, one of the most fascinating calls ever, a story of intrigue and mystery and and seduction and lost love and drugs. It all comes down to you and I trying to remember how to say hello in Italian. <laughs> That's what it turns into, Harry. That's what we're peddling over here. Well, we thought we were to. Um honeymoon in Italy for a little bit so I tried to learn a little bit of Italian but I'm not gonna be 100% accurate if I guess I just thought it was a greeting of some sort I went to Italy when I was 17 you went there yeah I went there and I didn't make any effort to learn any Italian because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an American and things work our way and they know English anyway that's how my oh it's Spanish Salud means your health in Spanish. It's used as a oh. toast. It's used as a toast. And my wife okay. says it after Well, I now sneeze. I feel extremely ignorant. Sorry as to anybody I. who... I don't know. I'm extremely ignorant <laughs> like human being. banging their head on their desk at how, <laughs> how I don't know what salud means listen, or is. Listen. Now I know. Everybody's ignorant about something. And if there's one thing I've learned through this show, it's that... Uh, Admitting your ignorance often and publicly is a really good way to remind people that you're out here trying to learn and trying to become a more well-rounded human being. Oh, totally. But I think that a lot of your audience are some pretty 
I don't know, genuine people who are just trying to do the best they can. They so, are, man. And I, I think get, your listeners know. I get to interact with them online and I get to meet them out on the road. And I tell you, it's a lot of people who are just like thoughtful. A lot of people, you know what people have been saying to me lately that's really meaningful? A lot of people go, I listen to your show because it's just nice to hear what other people are dealing with. It's just good yeah. to remind yourself that other people deal with things too. And God damn it, your story is going to remind other people, hey, <laughs> I'm not dealing with as much as that lady's dealing with. And God bless her. Not to say that it, you just made it clear that you don't like that phrase. Sal- <laughs> salute to her. Salute to no, her. No, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not that ignorant where I'm like, oh, screw everybody in their own religion. I mean, I still try to be really respectful of my mom. Of course. I debated for a long time if I should tell her I was an atheist or not, but... Yeah. Yeah. Ended up doing it. Yeah, you got to be honest. Man, religion just brings so much guilt. I couldn't deal with it. It brings a lot of beauty to some people's lives. When it breaks the right way, it, it can be the support system that one needs. I respect it, and it can be a beautiful thing. So, yeah. Sometimes that, it fills you with a... That is something that was really a hurdle for me after leaving religion. I decided at 20 that... Um, I didn't like all the answers to all the questions that I had, that they didn't feel like enough of an answer, like things were still too vague. Um, so after deciding that I wasn't going to have a belief system, I noticed that I became less comforted in all these times when before I would, because my mom being really religious, I was raised also just like her. And so everything, like I would just, pray and feel comfort about everything. And I had this huge support system in the church. And now it's just like, I don't know when I'm flying, I'm afraid of going down because then what happens? And just, I don't know, stuff like this, where I have to deal through my own emotion. I can't be like, oh, well, I'll just trust God that he's working things out for me. Now it's just like this very, I, I don't know. Like, you are on your own. So I totally think that religion can be a, a beautiful, comforting thing. And my mom, I don't know, my mom just loves all of the, uh, I don't know, the the nice things about her life that come with religion. And she likes having that belief system of where everything came from. And when, I don't know, she sees creation, she's just in awe. And I, yeah, I can totally see the beauty in it. Religion can be a really beautiful thing. It can connect you with people. It can remind you of community. It can it can it brings together the people who are your actual neighbors and shares an experience. And then sometimes the church you're raised in can also uh, systematically cover up the sexual abuse of a whole generation or two of teens in yeah, the entire state of Pennsylvania too. and help. Yeah. And I went appara- to Catholic school from preschool oh, to eighth man. grade. So I can oh, relate. So <laughs> another lapsed Catholic. Yeah. And then you're like, and then I recently, I just watched a, a movie with Oscar Isaac where I realized, oh, oh, is that true too? That the Catholic church apparently helped facilitate the Nazis escaping to Argentina and Brazil after world. Oh, okay. Another great thing. to But it's, <laughs> it's also really nice to go put a couple dollars in the basket and know that it's going to help the actual homeless people in your community. Yeah. Yeah, but also yeah. also apparently there's apparently we may be also funneled Nazis to safety. Oh, you know, there's you take the good and the bad or you maybe just <laughs> walk away and keep an arm's length after a certain point. Oh, something that I always um wanted to know, completely unrelated to anything we've talked about so far. Mm-hmm. What's your problem with dogs? Well, now you're bringing up something really controversial. <laughs> Has anybody asked you that before? It's been a—I mean, Every, I used to work in a cubicle where I could listen to Beautiful Anonymous all the time, but it's been a long time since I've heard an episode. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, people. Every time I mention that I'm not a dog person, people listen to me. I've had people tweet at me. <laughs> I am officially done listening to your show. Unsubscribe. You don't like dogs. <laughs> What can I say? I don't know why, but when I heard that the first time, I was offended. People flew into a rage. I don't know why. There will be people. I don't know why I need you to like <laughs> dogs, but also what happens so that you don't like dogs? Listen. There's people who will have listened to your whole story of infidel, you know, dealing with infidelity and drug addicts and being stalked and uh-huh. having to protect a kid who will be by far more upset at the fact that I don't love a border collie. 
They love. No, I just, I'm fine well, with I dogs, people. Sense. I had cats growing up. I like cats. They take care of themselves. They go and they poop in a box and they cover it up for you. And you just get dogs. Are, and my best friend growing up had t- had two dogs and they were really fun. And I like playing with them. But when we're trying to eat, they're bumping into your legs. They're trying to jump up and take the food. And it's fine. They're dogs. It's what they do. It just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. They jump on me. My friend uh, Jamie Miller growing up had a really, really big dog. And it once, like, it was a German shepherd and it, like, jumped on a couch and pinned me down. It was scary. What can I say? <laughs> Not everybody it likes everything. amazing. What? It wasn't I would, yes, I would love to be pinned down by a German shepherd. Listen to what you're saying. Hey, we got I five seconds left. Is this really how we're ending this? Oh, my God. Well, then I would like to thank Harry Nelson and Reverend John Delore because I never hear anything about them. And they wow, should- you really haven't listened in a while. It's Jared O'Connell now. The Reverend John Delore, he's been doing his own thing. I, uh, I don't know if you're still on the line, but if you are, so sincerely, I hope you take care of yourself. I hope you take care of that kid. I hope you get the whole truth. And uh, this stuff is really raw, and it was brave of you to share it, and I think it's going to help a lot of people. So thank you for doing so. Caller, I know I just said it after you hung up, but just in case you're listening to this part, you are one tough cookie, and I applaud you for it. And I hope this I hope this thing normalizes soon and you can find the foundation of your life again one way or the other, and you can get back to uh, moving forward because you're an incredibly strong person. Thank you for inspiring me, and uh, so cool of you to uh, call in, let us know what's going on, and I just really hope everything turns out okay and that you get the whole truth. Thank you so much. Harry Nelson was the captain of the ship today. Old Jared O'Connell ditched him at the wheel. Talked to Jay, just uh, sprinted out of the room and said, I got better things to do today. Thank you to Jared O'Connell, in all sincerity. Thank you to Harry. Thank you to Justin Linville. Thank you to Shell Shag. ChrisGeth.com is where you can find out about my road dates. They're out there. I'd love to meet you on the road. Hey, if you like the show, go to Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe. Helps when you do. See you next time on Beautiful Anonymous. Next week on Beautiful Anonymous, losing 150 pounds? That's supposed to be nothing but a a victory, right? Well, our caller tells us the whole story. Well, what's going on? This might on? be a downer call, unfortunately, or and a good one, I guess. That's okay. Every once in a while, you go to a comedy festival and you just have a real downer of an experience. It's totally fine. <laughs> I have an interesting story. Most of my life, I was super morbidly obese. But I started losing weight, and I lost about 150 pounds in less than a year. In less than a year? You know, I didn't accidentally lose it. I worked really hard to lose it. And so I went from really, really big and living a life that way to super athletic and, and fit and running marathons. Marathons? Wow. Yeah. Well, the... Yeah. The crowd is applauding your, your newfound uh, dedication to health. That's next time on Beautiful Anonymous. Hey, everybody. It's Chris. As you've probably heard, got a new series, Beautiful Follow-Ups. We're following up with some of the all-time great callers from the history of this show. Here's me saying hello to a bunch of them. Thank you for following up with Beautiful Anonymous. Hey, Gap. Hello, old friend. Hello? Hello, this is... I'm not supposed to know that. It's good to hear your voice, Chris. I'm glad to be able to do this with you. Hey, it's Gethard. Hey, Gethard. Good to hear from you. Hey, is this the Puppet Master? This is the Puppet Master. How are you? Hey, this is Gethard. Chris Gethard. How are you? Beautiful follow-ups. Come join me on Stitcher Premium. We'll all catch up with some old friends together. And guess what? You get a free month if you go to stitcherpremium.com slash stories. Use the code stories. Oh, baby, come back. Oh, baby, come back. It's not the same since you left. 
Hey, this is Arnie from the comedy podcast Hello from the Magic Tavern, a chat show I host from the magical land of Foon with my co-hosts... Usador, the Blue Wizard. And Chuck, the Shapeshifter. Most weeks we interview adventurers... Wedding planners. Ambulatory trees. But this week we have a special episode. I am so excited to learn about the Earth lore contained in Pride and Prejudice. We're going to do a book club of Pride and Prejudice. And you said this is a well-loved book on Earth, right? Yeah, it's one of those books that people love or were forced to read or more likely it's one of those I'm gonna get to it. And some of our most beloved guests are returning to read the book with us and enjoy some drinks and food over book club. We have Flower, we have Crom the Barbarian, and Germ. You know who they are. Maybe you don't give a crap about what an academic thinks about Jane Austen, but don't you want to know what a wizard and a badger think about it? Not enough spells. Not enough grubs. Not, Not enough, enough sword, sword fights. fights. Whether you love Pride and Prejudice or have no interest in reading it and just want to listen to a book club go really off the rails, you'll enjoy this week's Hello from the Magic Tavern. We shall defeat this book! Thank you.